In the heart of ancient Egypt, amidst the grandeur of towering temples, bustling marketplaces, and the life-giving waters of the Nile River, the daily rhythms of existence unfolded with a profound sense of purpose and tradition. It was an era when the gods walked among mortals, when hieroglyphs told tales of gods and heroes, and when the legacy of a civilization was etched into the very fabric of daily life. This is a tale that transports us back in time, to a land where the mysteries of the cosmos were mirrored in the rituals of everyday life. Join us on a journey through the life of Amun, a simple farmer in the city of Thebes, as he and his family navigate the challenges and blessings of an era where the sacred and the mundane coexisted in harmony. From the first light of dawn to the tranquil embrace of the Egyptian night, we will follow Amun's footsteps through ten distinct sections, each revealing a different facet of ancient Egyptian existence. In this captivating narrative, we will explore the spiritual devotion that infused every aspect of life, the timeless traditions that bound families and communities together, and the enduring legacy of a civilization that thrived for thousands of years. As we venture into the heart of this ancient land, we will witness the sunrise over the Nile, experience the rituals of the bustling marketplace, and stand in awe before the grand temples dedicated to the gods. We will labor in the fields alongside Amun and his family, share moments of respite in the shade of a date palm tree, and witness the evening rituals that connected mortals to the divine. So, step back in time with us, and let the sands of history carry you to an era where the gods and the people of Egypt were inextricably linked, where the Nile was the lifeblood of the land, and where tradition and faith were the cornerstones of existence. This is a story of a day in ancient Egypt, a tale woven with threads of reverence, resilience, and the enduring spirit of a civilization that has left an indelible mark on the tapestry of human history. Section 1. Dawn of a New Day In the heart of ancient Egypt, the first rays of the sun pierced the darkness, announcing the arrival of a new day in the city of Thebes. The horizon blazed with hues of crimson and gold as the world transitioned from night to day. Thebes, situated on the eastern bank of the mighty Nile River, was a city of great importance, its existence dating back thousands of years. Amun, a farmer of modest means, stirred from his slumber. His sleep had been restive, and he welcomed the early hours, for in Egypt, the day began with the rising sun. Amun's home was a simple mud-brick structure with reed-thatched roofing. He shared it with his wife, Nefereth, and their three children. It was a modest dwelling, a reflection of their station in life. Amun's first task upon waking was to pay homage to the gods. The small shrine in the corner of their home held statues of deities such as Hathor, the goddess of love and motherhood, and Ta the god of craftsmanship. He believed that by offering prayers and incense, he could invoke divine favor upon his family and his work in the fields. The morning light filtered through the narrow window slits, casting a soft glow on the shrine. Amun knelt before it, his head bowed, hands outstretched in reverence. He recited ancient prayers passed down through generations, invoking the blessings of the gods upon his loved ones and his endeavors. Beside the shrine, a stone basin waited for Amun. It was adorned with intricate hieroglyphs, symbols of purity and cleansing. He carefully poured water from a ceramic jug into the basin, allowing it to trickle over his hands and onto the ground, symbolizing purification of body and soul. Once cleansed, he felt ready to face the challenges of the day. Amun's wife, Neferent, stirred in her sleep. Their youngest child nestled beside her. The other two children, already awake, watched their father's rituals with fascination. They too understood the importance of honoring the gods in their daily lives, a tradition deeply ingrained in Egyptian culture. With his morning rituals complete, Amun rose from his knees, a sense of purpose filling his heart. Today, 
Like every day, he would work the fertile fields along the banks of the Nile, tending to the crops that sustained his family and his community. As the sun continued its ascent, Amun's thoughts turned to the promise of a new day in this ancient land, where the cycle of life and tradition had endured for millennia. Section 2. Morning Rituals Amun's morning rituals were a testament to the deep-rooted spirituality that defined daily life in ancient Egypt. As the golden rays of the rising sun bathed the city of Thebes in a warm glow, Amun and his family prepared for the day ahead. After completing his prayers at the shrine, Amun turned to his wife, Neferet, who had awakened with the first light of dawn. She had already begun the day's preparations, grinding grains to make flour for bread. The scent of freshly ground wheat filled the air, a reminder of the sustenance the land provided. Their children, a boy named Kemet and two girls, Satis and Iset, sat nearby, their eyes filled with curiosity. Neferet smiled at her husband as he approached. It's a new day, Amun, she said, her voice soft and reassuring. The gods are with us. Amun nodded, his heart filled with gratitude for his family and the blessings of the gods. Indeed, my love, today, May the gods favor our toil in the fields. Neferet placed a bowl of freshly baked bread on the woven reed mat, and the family gathered around to break their fast. Bread, a staple of the Egyptian diet, represented life itself. As they ate, Amun explained the significance of the day's work to his children, instilling in them the importance of their role in the family's livelihood. With breakfast concluded, Amun and his family prepared to depart for the fields. Neferet donned a simple linen dress, while Amun wrapped a kilt around his waist. Their children wore garments made from cotton and linen, woven with care by their mother. Before leaving, Amun approached the shrine once more. He lit a small oil lamp and placed it before the statues of the gods, a gesture of gratitude for their guidance and protection. Then, he picked up a woven basket filled with offerings of fruit and vegetables, which they would share with their fellow farmers later in the day as a symbol of communal support. As they stepped out of their modest home, the sun had fully risen, casting long shadows across the sandy paths of Thebes. Amun, Neferet, and their children made their way towards the Nile, ready to begin their work in the fertile fields. In ancient Egypt, each new day was a continuation of the eternal cycle of life, and Amun and his family embraced it with unwavering faith and devotion to the gods who watched over them. Section 3. The Nile's Blessing Amun and his family, having left their home behind, ventured towards the life-giving heart of their daily existence, the fertile banks of the Nile. Here, in the shadow of the Grand River, they would toil to ensure their survival and the prosperity of their community. As they approached the river, they were met with a breathtaking sight. The Nile, often referred to as Hapi in ancient Egyptian texts, stretched wide and majestic before them, its waters shimmering in the morning sun. To the Egyptians, the Nile was not just a river, but a divine gift, the source of their livelihood and the very essence of their existence. Amun and his family joined the ranks of fellow farmers who had gathered along the riverbanks. They exchanged greetings and exchanged stories of the previous day's challenges and triumphs. The sense of camaraderie and shared purpose was palpable, a testament to the unity of the Egyptian people. As they prepared to work, Amun's eyes fixed on the silt-laden soil. The annual flooding of the Nile, which occurred predictably and miraculously, deposited nutrient-rich silt upon the fields. This fertile silt was a sacred blessing from the god Hapi, a symbol of rebirth and abundance. With their hoes and wooden plows, the farmers began the delicate task of tilling the soil, preparing it for planting. Their primary crops were wheat and barley, staples of the Egyptian diet. Wheat symbolized life and sustenance, while barley was essential for brewing beer, 
a beverage consumed by all classes of society. The planting season was meticulously timed, guided by the predictable rhythms of the Nile's inundation and recession. Amun's children, Kemet, Satis, and Iset, assisted in sowing the seeds. With their small hands, they carefully dropped seeds into the furrows created by their parents. It was a family affair, and Amun took pride in passing down the knowledge of agriculture to the next generation. As the day progressed, the sun climbed higher in the sky, and the heat became more intense. Beads of sweat formed on the brows of the farmers, but they continued their work with unwavering determination. Each stroke of the hoe and each seed planted was a tribute to the gods and a testament to their commitment to their community. Amun couldn't help but look up at the clear blue sky, offering a silent prayer of gratitude to the sun god, Ra, whose radiant warmth nurtured the crops. He knew that the journey of the day had only just begun, and there were many hours of labor ahead. But as long as the Nile flowed, the fields remained fertile, and the gods smiled upon their efforts. Amun and his family had faith that they would endure, just as their ancestors had for countless generations. Section 4. The Marketplace Buzz. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, bathing the city of Thebes in a warm and relentless glow, the marketplace began to bustle with activity. This vibrant hub of commerce was a central gathering place for the people of Thebes, where traders and merchants converged to offer their wares. The marketplace, known as a shunet in ancient Egyptian, was a lively and colorful spectacle. It was a place where goods from all corners of the Nile Valley and beyond were exchanged. Traders, their faces shaded by wide-brimmed hats, displayed an array of products on woven mats and simple wooden stalls. Amun and his family, having completed their morning's work in the fields, made their way to the marketplace. Their baskets were filled with freshly harvested produce, including plump vegetables and grains. They knew that trading surplus goods was essential for the prosperity of their household. As they approached the marketplace, the vibrant sights and sounds enveloped them. Spices from the exotic lands of Punt and the incense of Arabia filled the air, mingling with the fragrant scent of lotus blossoms. The chatter of merchants haggling over prices and the calls of street vendors selling their wares created a cacophony that was uniquely Egyptian. Amun and Neferet joined the throngs of people perusing the market. Neferet was particularly interested in the textiles and clothing stalls, where bolts of colorful linen and cotton fabric were on display. She admired the intricate patterns and designs that would soon become garments for her family. Amun, meanwhile, focused on bartering for the items they needed. He approached a vendor selling pottery, essential for storing grains and other goods. With practiced negotiation, he struck a deal, exchanging some of their surplus crops for sturdy clay pots. The art of haggling was not just about commerce. It was a social interaction that carried cultural significance. Their eldest child, Kemet, watched wide-eyed as his parents navigated the marketplace. He was learning valuable lessons about trade, economics, and the bustling life of the city. The marketplace was not just a place for commerce, it was also a vibrant center of social interaction, where news and stories circulated alongside goods. The marketplace of Thebes was a microcosm of Egyptian society, a place where people from all walks of life came together. The rich and the poor, the powerful and the humble, all converged here to exchange goods, ideas, and stories. It was a testament to the thriving culture and economy of ancient Egypt, where the heartbeat of the city could be felt in the bustling shunet. Section 5. Artistry in Progress. Amidst the backdrop of bustling Thebes, there was another realm of activity that unfolded with a sense of purpose and reverence, the world of artisans and craftsmen. In this section of the city, not far from the Grand Temple of Amun-Ra, 
skilled artists and artisans work tirelessly on their creations. The workshop of Ptah, the god of craftsmanship, was a place of inspiration and dedication. Artisans toiled with precision, transforming raw materials into magnificent works of art. The rhythmic sounds of hammers and chisels filled the air, punctuated by the occasional laughter of apprentices learning the sacred craft. One such artisan was Imhotep, a sculptor known for his ability to breathe life into stone. He meticulously carved statues of gods, pharaohs, and revered figures, each piece infused with devotion to the deities they represented. Imhotep's hands moved with practiced grace, bringing forth the essence of the divine in every stroke. Beside him, a painter named Nefertari applied vibrant pigments to a wooden panel. Her brush danced across the surface, giving life to intricate scenes of daily Egyptian life and grand depictions of pharaohs receiving the blessings of the gods. Each stroke of her brush was a testament to her artistry and the rich visual culture of ancient Egypt. Jewelers labored over precious metals and gemstones, creating exquisite adornments fit for the pharaohs and nobility. Their pieces would grace the necks, wrists, and fingers of those in power, symbols of both wealth and divine protection. Amun and his family paused to admire the artistry in progress. Kemet, in particular, was captivated by the skill of the craftsmen. He watched in awe as Imhotep and Nefertari transformed lifeless materials into objects of beauty and significance. Imhotep noticed the young boy's curiosity and beckoned him closer. He handed Kemet a small piece of limestone and a wooden mallet. Would you like to try, young one? Imhotep asked, his eyes twinkling with kindness. Kemet eagerly accepted the offer and took a tentative swing at the limestone. He quickly discovered that the artistry required patience, skill, and a deep connection to the subject matter. With guidance from Imhotep, he chiseled away at the stone, forming rough shapes that began to resemble a divine figure. As Kemet continued to work, he gained a newfound appreciation for the dedication and mastery of the artisans. The realization that these craftsmen were not simply creating objects, but channeling the divine into their creations left a profound impression on him. With the sun descending towards the western horizon, Amun and his family bid farewell to the artisans and their workshops. They carried with them a deeper understanding of the artistic spirit that infused every facet of Egyptian life, from the grand temples to the humblest of homes. As they left, Kemet clutched his small limestone carving, a tangible reminder of the day he had glimpsed the world of Egyptian artistry in progress. As the story neared its climax, the sun began its descent, casting a golden hue upon the land. The storyteller concluded his tale and the children applauded, their young hearts filled with wonder. With a sense of renewed energy and purpose, Amun and his family prepared to leave their shaded sanctuary and return to the fields. The midday reprieve had provided a brief oasis of rest and inspiration in the midst of their demanding daily lives. As they resumed their tasks, they carried with them the lessons of the storyteller, the nourishment of their meal, and the enduring bond of family in the ancient land of Egypt. Section 7. Labor Resumes as the day continued its relentless march, Amun and his family left the shade of the date palm tree and headed back towards the fields that had become the center of their existence. The midday reprieve had offered a brief respite from the sun's scorching embrace, but the work that lay ahead was crucial to their survival. The fields, bathed in the golden glow of the late afternoon sun, awaited their return. Amun and his family joined their fellow farmers, who had also refreshed themselves during the midday break. Together, they set about the laborious tasks of the afternoon. In the fertile soil, the crops they had planted earlier in the day were already beginning to take root. The young shoots of wheat and barley swayed gently in the warm breeze, a promising sign of the bounty to come. Yet, 
there was much work to be done to ensure a successful harvest. Amun took up his wooden plow, its blade worn smooth by years of use. With determined strides, he guided the plow through the earth, creating neat rows for the crops. The plow's deep furrows would allow the roots of the plants to delve deep into the nutrient-rich soil, ensuring their growth and eventual abundance. Nefere and their children followed closely behind Amun, carefully tending to the delicate seedlings. They used small baskets to distribute water from the Nile, nourishing the thirsty crops. Each drop of water was a precious resource, a reminder of the vital connection between the river and their livelihood. Throughout the fields, the landscape was a tapestry of labor in progress. Farmers and laborers, some free and some bound in servitude, toiled side by side. The quarries echoed with the sounds of chisels and hammers as workers carved stone blocks for grand monuments and temples. The rhythmic chants of those hauling heavy loads of stone or mud bricks resonated through the air. Despite the physical demands of their work, there was a sense of camaraderie among the laborers. They shared stories, songs, and laughter, forging bonds that transcended the toil of the day. In this collective effort, they found strength and resilience. As the sun began its descent towards the western horizon, casting long shadows across the fields, Amun and his family felt a deep sense of satisfaction. They had made significant progress in their tasks, ensuring that the crops would continue to thrive in the fertile soil of the Nile flood plain. The labor of the afternoon was a testament to the enduring spirit of the Egyptian people, their unwavering dedication to the land, and their belief in the blessings of the gods. As they headed home, dust covered but determined, they carried with them the promise of a bountiful harvest and the knowledge that their efforts contributed to the prosperity of their community and the legacy of ancient Egypt. Section 8, The Temple's Reverence. As the golden orb of the sun began its descent towards the western horizon, signaling the approach of evening, Amun and his family, along with many others in Thebes, turned their attention to a place of profound significance the Grand Temple of Amun-Ra, the supreme deity of the Egyptian pantheon. The temple's towering sandstone walls and colossal pylons loomed large against the darkening sky. It was a sacred place, a bridge between the mortal realm and the divine, where priests conducted rituals and offerings to honor the gods. The temple complex was a testament to the architectural and spiritual prowess of ancient Egypt. Amun, Neferet, and their children, dressed in their finest linen garments, joined the procession of worshippers making their way to the temple. The scent of incense, carried on the gentle breeze, filled the air, a fragrant offering to the gods. The path to the temple was lined with statues of pharaohs and gods, a reminder of the enduring connection between the divine and the earthly realm. At the temple's entrance, they were greeted by priests clad in elaborate robes and headdresses. These revered figures were the intermediaries between the people and the gods, responsible for conducting the sacred ceremonies and maintaining the temple's sanctity. The family entered the temple's grand courtyard, where offerings of food, incense, and precious gems were already laid out upon ornate altars. The scent of myrrh and frankincense hung in the air, creating an atmosphere of reverence and holiness. The flickering light of oil lamps added to the mystique, casting dancing shadows upon the temple's walls. In the inner sanctum, the heart of the temple, a colossal statue of Amun-Ra stood in all its divine splendor. The god was depicted with the body of a man and the head of a falcon symbolizing his dominion over the heavens. Worshippers, including Amun's family, knelt before the statue, offering prayers and incantations. Amun presented a small, meticulously crafted statuette of the goddess Hathor, a symbol of his family's devotion and gratitude. With a sense of humility, he placed it among the offerings, a gesture of 
acknowledgement of the God's favor, the priests, their voices resonating with the power of the divine, conducted hymns and invocations, beseeching the gods for blessings, protection, and guidance. The words were ancient, passed down through generations, and they carried the weight of tradition and faith. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the temple's torches and oil lamps were lit, casting a warm and ethereal glow. The atmosphere was filled with a sense of awe and connection to the spiritual realm. For Amun and his family, this sacred moment in the temple was a reminder of their place within the grand tapestry of Egyptian life, a tapestry woven with threads of faith, tradition, and reverence for the gods. With the conclusion of the evening ceremonies, Amun, Neferet, and their children exited the temple, their hearts filled with a profound sense of peace and devotion. Yeah. The temple of Amun-Ra, like the Nile itself, was an integral part of their existence, a source of spiritual nourishment that transcended the boundaries of time and space. As they made their way home, they carried with them the blessings of the gods and the knowledge that their faith and traditions would endure for generations to come. Section 9. Evening by the Nile As the sun's last rays dipped below the western horizon, Thebes transformed once more. The vibrant city that had bustled with life during the day now settled into the tranquil embrace of evening. Amun and his family, like many others, made their way back to their homes, seeking solace and sustenance along the banks of the mighty Nile. Their home, a simple mud-brick dwelling with a thatched roof, welcomed them with its familiar warmth. Neferet lit a series of oil lamps, their gentle light dispelling the encroaching darkness. The flickering flames cast dancing shadows on the walls adorned with depictions of gods and hieroglyphics, an homage to their spirituality and heritage. The family gathered in their modest living space, a room adorned with woven reed mats and cushions. On a low wooden table, Nefere had prepared the evening meal. The centerpiece was a loaf of freshly baked bread, still warm and fragrant. Surrounding it were dishes of vegetables, lentils, and a stew made from the day's catch of Nile fish. Amun, Neferet and their children sat cross-legged on the mats, their hands reaching for the dishes. They ate in silence, savoring the simple yet nourishing flavors of their meal. The river's breeze flowed through the open windows, bringing with it the distant sounds of the Nile, a soothing lullaby that eased the day's toil from their bodies. After dinner, Amun took a moment to recount the day's events with his family. He spoke of the progress made in the fields, the lessons learned in the marketplace, and the sense of connection they had experienced in the temple. Their children listened attentively, absorbing the wisdom of their parents and the stories of their ancestors. As the night deepened, the family prepared for sleep. They washed their faces and hands with water from a ceramic basin, a cleansing ritual that symbolized the washing away of the day's hardships and impurities. Nefere anointed her children with fragrant oils, invoking blessings and protection from the gods. Their reed mats were arranged in a circle in the center of the room. Amun and Neferet lay down, their children nestled beside them. In the quiet of the night, Amun began to tell a story, a tale of gods and heroes, of the eternal struggle between chaos and order, and of the timeless values that guided their lives. The children's eyelids grew heavy, and one by one they succumbed to the embrace of sleep. Amun and Neferet watched over them, their hearts filled with love and gratitude for their family and their place in the ancient tapestry of Egypt. Outside, the Nile flowed steadily, a constant reminder of the cycles of life and the enduring presence of the gods. Under the star-studded Egyptian sky, Amun and his family embraced the tranquility of the night, their dreams intertwined with the history, traditions, an enduring spirit of their beloved land. Section 10, Nightfall and Dreams. 
As the night deepened over Thebes, the city's bustling streets fell into a hushed stillness. Amun and his family, nestled within the walls of their modest home, prepared to embrace the tranquility of the Egyptian night. This was a time of reflection, dreams, and the assurance of the eternal presence of the gods. Inside their dwelling, the oil lamps cast a warm and flickering light. Shadows danced on the walls, a living tapestry of ancient symbols and images. The air was scented with the faint aroma of incense, remnants of the day's offerings to the gods lingering in the corners of the room. Amun and Neferet lay beside their slumbering children, wrapped in linen blankets woven with care. Their bodies found comfort on reed mats laid upon the earthen floor. They embraced each other, their love a testament to the enduring bonds of family in this land, where tradition and faith were deeply intertwined. The night held its own enchantments in ancient Egypt. The star-studded sky, known as the Nun, sparkled with a brilliance that spoke of the infinite cosmos. Amun and Neferet gazed out of their small window, their eyes drawn to the constellations that had guided their ancestors for millennia. Amun, a man of introspection, found solace in the night silence. He offered his own private prayers to the gods, a personal conversation with the divine. He expressed gratitude for the day's blessings, sought guidance for the challenges of the future, and prayed for the well-being of his family. Neferet, equally devout, whispered her own supplications, her voice filled with a mother's love and a wife's devotion. She sought protection for her children, strength for her husband, and the continued favor of the gods upon their household. The night also held dreams, visions that were believed to be messages from the gods themselves. Amun had once dreamt of a bountiful harvest, a vision that had guided his agricultural decisions for an entire season. Neferet had dreamt of the birth of their first child, a prophetic dream that had heralded a joyous addition to their family. Under the serene gaze of the gods depicted on their shrine, Amun and Neferet settled into a peaceful sleep. As they slept, their dreams carried them to realms both mystical and familiar, where the gods whispered secrets and the past intertwined with the present. Outside, the Nile flowed steadily, a symbol of life's unceasing cycle. The city of Thebes slept beneath the watchful gaze of the stars, its people living out their lives in harmony with the traditions and beliefs that had shaped them for millennia. In the heart of ancient Egypt, the night was a time of reflection, a time when the dreams of individuals and the dreams of a civilization intertwined, ensuring that the legacy of this remarkable land would endure through the ages, carried forward by the unwavering faith and devotion of its people. As the stars continued to twinkle in the boundless Egyptian sky, the city of Thebes and its people rested in the embrace of the night. The day in ancient Egypt had drawn to a close, but the legacy of tradition, faith, and devotion lived on. Through the life of Amun and his family, we have journeyed into a world where the sacred and the everyday intertwined seamlessly. From the dawn's first light to the tranquil nightfall, we have witnessed the unbreakable bond between the people and their gods, the enduring strength of communal unity, and the deep-rooted traditions that define their existence. In the heart of this remarkable civilization, the Nile flowed as both a lifeline and a symbol of renewal. The marketplace buzzed with commerce and camaraderie, the temples resounded with reverence, and the fields bore witness to the tireless toil of those who tilled the land. Amun, Neferet, and their children stand as embodiments of the enduring spirit of ancient Egypt, a spirit marked by unwavering faith, resilience, and an unshakable belief in the blessings of the gods. Their daily lives were a testament to the profound connection between the mortal and the divine, a connection that guided their actions, hopes, and dreams. As we bid farewell to the world of ancient Egypt, we carry with us the echoes of a civilization that has left an indelible mark on the annals of history. The Nile continues to flow, 
the temples still stand as testaments to human ingenuity and devotion, and the stories of gods and heroes live on through the ages. In the end, the tale of Amun and his family is not just a story of a single day, but a timeless narrative that transcends time and place. It is a reminder that the echoes of the past continue to resonate in the present, and that the traditions, faith, and enduring spirit of a people can shape the course of history, leaving an eternal legacy for all who dare to listen. As we step away from the banks of the Nile, may we carry with us the lessons and the reverence of this ancient land, and may we, too, find inspiration in the unwavering devotion of those who came before us. For the story of ancient Egypt is not a closed book, but an open invitation to explore the depths of human heritage, to honor our connection to the divine, and to draw strength from the timeless traditions that bind us all together.